Good evening. We gather this evening to celebrate the holiest night for all Christians. We gather to mark and to remember the Lord's passage from death to new and eternal life. In this, the mother of all vigils. Our celebration this evening consists of four parts. The Liturgy of the Holy Fire, the of Salvation History and the readings from Scripture, the Liturgy of Holy Baptism, and finally, the celebration of Easter Eucharist. Tonight, we particularly extend a warm welcome to all visitors to our parish community. As the ministers of the celebration proceed into the church after the blessing of the new fire, we invite all of you to light your candles from the candles that will be brought into the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. My dear brothers and sisters, on this, the most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to eternal life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and to pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that these Paschal celebrations may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that our hearts and minds made pure, we may attain festivities of unending splendor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. By his glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our minds and hearts. Amen. Amen. Start lighting the candles. Josh. Oh, for heaven's sake.
make way for the candle. If you rise, the candle is entering the church. Exalt, let them exalt the host of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpets of salvation sound loud, our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her. Ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, 
filled with the mighty voices of the people. It is truly right and just, with heart and love of mind and heart, and with devoted services of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, His Son, His only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, white clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feast of Passover, in which it is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, who anoints the doorpost of believers. This is a night when once you led our forebearers, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is a night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is a night that even now throughout the world set Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is a night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault, they learned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. Oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is a night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is a night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocent to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle of solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, and in its sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. 
Therefore, O Lord, we pray you, that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets. Christ, your Son, who's coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. My dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Please extinguish your candles and be seated. I ask that you put aside any missiles or readers and listen to and reflect on the words of Scripture that you will hear spoken. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind blew over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, it, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. 
Evening came, and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the waters teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the waters of the sea, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything that he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all of their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work that he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, by those you have redeemed, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory from Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, so it turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the col column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic and he so clogged their chariot wheels, they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on into the sea when the Lord hurled them into the midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the, Egyptian, the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise him. The God of my Father, I extol him. The Lord is a warrior. Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. The flood waters covered them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O oh Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O oh Lord, has shattered the enemy. brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. O oh God, whose ancient wonders remained undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of all the nations through the waters of rebirth grant, we pray that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Excuse me. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant. 
the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
O power for a living God, sole hope for the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render your undivided we, we, may, we may render your undivided service. Through Christ our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For, if we have grown into union with him, through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If... Then we have died with Christ, 
we believe that we shall also live with him, we know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourself as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, 
and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early, when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You heard it in the great exalted. This is the night. This is the night that is unlike all other nights. For this night is the center, truly, of our faith. We may have come together at night at Christmas when there was the nativity scene. And I suggested that that's gospel. You see, it's a proclamation. And the proclamation demands a response. Some people came and worshiped the Lord. Others walked on by and sought ways to destroy him. Tonight, we also gather. We gather with other symbols of our faith. The last several days, we've gathered with the symbol of the Holy Eucharist. Now, back in the tabernacle, we gathered for the celebration of the Lord's Passion, that cross now enshrined. And tonight, it's the bright light of Easter itself. The bright light that says, this is our faith. This is our faith that great candle is lighted during the Easter season. It's lighted for every baptism. It's lighted for every funeral as well. For it says, Christ is here. This is the night when we seek the Lord, like Mary Magdalene and the other women did. They went to where they thought Jesus was going to be. As you see, usually when you put a dead person in a tomb, he tends to remain there, except not for Jesus. Why was that tomb empty? I could offer some reasons. They went to the wrong one. Bad guys came and took the body. Good guys came and took the body, so the bad guys wouldn't come and take the body. Or Jesus rose from the dead. If you believe the latter, you're truly a Christian. We gather tonight to do exactly what those first people did, to seek the Lord while he can be found. For the last 40 days or so since Ash Wednesday, we've been engaged as church on retreat. And I've suggested to you several times, why not this Lent experience courage to proclaim I am a Catholic Christian? It's difficult to say that and not be ridiculed. Oh, you believe in that hocus pocus? No, I believe in the Holy Eucharist. Oh, you believe in that cross? Yes, I do. I also believe in the resurrection. Oh, I don't believe any of that. Let me help you along the way. And so that my joy may be yours and your joy, as Jesus tells us, may be complete. What completes our joy? Our joy is completed when we know that because of that candle, because of that Holy Eucharist, because of that cross, death is a common, not a period. Something more happens. New life. We're renewed. I mentioned last night to a very good friend who doesn't believe in God anymore that we're not going to have, we might not have, it could rain, so we won't have the Easter fire. And she says, well, you know, rain renews everything too. Well, yes, it does. But Jesus does it even better. Oh, Mikey, really? And so let's not go any farther. 
You see, tonight is the night when life is renewed. And for us in this community of St. Juliana, two have been, be, have been preparing for this night, along with us, Landon and Josh. Tonight is your night in this congregation. If you were a lot younger and brought to the church as infants, we would say, oh, the church rejoices in the family that's brought you, for new life has brought you to the church. And we're overjoyed because numbers are being added to our community. The pastor is especially happy because more money will come into the collection. <laughs> but the joy of having two adults at a time when ridicule is the menu, when time of no joy of saying, I'm a Catholic Christian, we have two. And just to spend a moment, we were told in that wonderful um, reading to seek the Lord while he, be, while he may be found, but the scoundrel forsake his ways. Well, I hint that maybe we have two scoundrels. You see, Landon is a professional skateboard player. Now, can't you imagine Bart Simpson? How many times did you tell, oh, that skateboard kid, he's going to ruin the cement and everything else? Scoundrel, I'm glad that you are seeking the Lord with us. The community rejoices with you and your family. And then there's Josh. Josh sells cars. Now, I asked him earlier if he had white shoes and a diamond for his pinky. He knew exactly where I was going. Scoundrel, forsake your ways and charge the right price for the car and admit that that used car might be overused and not exactly as it's being sold. But that's not the point. Forsake your previous life and take on new life today and for the rest of your life. Take on the new life of Christ that you will soon be washed in, in the waters of baptism and clothed with a white garment and given a baptismal candle lighted from the Easter candle. You'll be sealed with the Holy Spirit in confirmation and you'll receive Eucharist for the first time, but not the last, for you will come frequently to the church and receive the sacraments here. You will come to our community and experience the joy that is St. Juliana because of the risen Lord. You will come encouraged to learn more and more about the faith and to live it with us. Tonight, we rejoice and are glad because it's not like all other nights. Something strange is happening tonight. We're seeking the Lord in a new way, imitating those first Christians. May we find the Lord among us and rejoice because of the meal. Rejoice because of the sacrifice. Have courage because of that candle that overpowers all darkness. Wasn't it just marvelous when the New Testament reading was read, the epistle, the lights come on, and the gloria. For until then, the people who walked in darkness didn't see the light. And now we see the light. The light, not of an empty tomb, but the light of the risen Lord. May the risen Lord be with you this Easter and all times. God bless. I invite Josh and Landon to be baptized together with your godparents to come forward, renounce sin, and make your profession of faith. Our dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of our brothers in their blessed hope as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them his merciful help. Let us all stand for the litany of saints.
Christ have mercy.
chosen ones to new birth through the grace of baptism. Glorious in the year of grace. And Jesus, Son of the living God, Glorious in the year of grace. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Almighty ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and sent forth the spirit of adoption to create new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism so that what is carried out by humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through the holy sacramental signs, and who in so many ways have prepared water your have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would take a new and glorious power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and the beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people to be baptized. O God, whose son Jesus, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Look, now we pray upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her this fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all squalor of, old, of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism unto death may rise again to new life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Landon and Josh, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. 
My brothers and sisters, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, who rose from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection in the body and life everlasting? Landon, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Josh, I baptize you. Take off your glasses. Josh, <laughs> I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God, parents, Present the newly baptized with the white baptismal gown. Our brothers and sisters, you've become a new creation and you've clothed yourself in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Bring the candle down. Landon, receive the light of Christ. Josh, receive the light of Christ. You have been enlightened by Christ. May you always walk as a child of that light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts so that when the good Lord comes, you may go out to meet him with all of the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. I now invite you to go forth and share your light of faith with this, our community of faith.
to the entire community. Through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in holy baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us all renew the promises of baptism which, by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask all of you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author, of, the author and prince of sin? I do. Once more, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of sins, keep by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord forever. Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Keep your candles lighted.
God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus forever and ever. Amen. the congregation. Our candidates for confirmation, by your baptism you have been born again in Christ and become new members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon the apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to be baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be true witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. Get the sacred chrism from the amber. My dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation to strengthen them with his gifts and to anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Elijah, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Gabriel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. This is the night that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. With our baptismal faith strengthened and renewed, we feast with joy in the Lord as we offer these prayers. For all men and women who lead Holy Church, that the good news will inform the minds, touch the hearts, and influence the actions of people everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For Josh and Landon, our newly baptized, that, he will, that they will continue to grow in the knowledge and love of Christ and body, the church, rejoicing in the gift of his new faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For leaders of nations and makers of laws, that they will be women and men of courage, truth, justice, mercy, and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish community during this Easter season, that we will strive for greater conversion, a love for the liturgy, and close friendship in community. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for those who are sick among our family and friends, that they will know the healing power of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For the dead who have been united with Christ in a death like his will also share his glorious resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord in thanksgiving for all the ministers and ministries of St. Juliana Parish Catholic Church and Catholic Grammar School and all who have led us in prayer, worship through this Lent into Easter, including our choir, our video crew, and many others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the intention of this Mass, for the parishioners of St. Juliana Parish and Catholic Grammar School, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord of life renewed, this is our Easter faith. As we rejoice in your Son's resurrection, may all the world be enlightened by the promises of the good news. Grant all of our prayers through Christ our Lord today and forever. Amen. Amen. Extinguish your candles and please be seated. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, Out of Darkness, number 395.
altar table is ready now. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, the almighty and loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of all your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what was begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he's destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with saints Juliana and Peregrine and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm with faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his brother bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you today. Strengthen, we pray, in their holy purpose, your servants, who by the cleansing waters of rebirth and the bestowing of the Holy Spirit have today been joined to your holy people, the church, and grant that they may always walk in the newness of life offered to them today. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and using the words that Jesus taught us, together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace. Oh, God bless.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the table of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Join in the refrain.
please join in singing Regina Chaley, number 416, 416. Regina Thank all of you for attending this great Easter vigil. It's the um, mother of all vigils. It's the mass of all masses. It's just everything that we would possibly have in a mass of the resurrection of the Lord, which we celebrate. A number of years ago, when I was a young seminarian in Denver, it was snowing in Denver on Easter Sunday. And one of our older priests said, oh yes, on this on this glorious Christmas day, we all say Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, I, I can't do much about the weather, but I, I'm glad that you came out of the weather uh, to be with us at this Easter vigil. We all had to read a book a while back called Good to Great. I think the choir has gone from good to great in the last several days. Thank you for leading us through all of this. And for the wonderful deacons I have at this parish and the ministers who prepared Josh and uh, Landon for the celebration of the um, sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Holy Eucharist, thank you, the um, RCIA team and, and all who have had anything to do with their formation to date. It'll only get better and better when they start saying the prayers and knowing when to stand up, sit down, and, and kneel. Um, and put money in the collection. Uh, th that'll be good. I was once asked, what, what are really the, the symbols? What do you give the newly initiated? Well, that was easy. You know, the collection uh, envelopes and the bingo card, and of course, the invitation to the Knights of Columbus golf tournament. Um, welcome to the club, the, the two of you. We're happy that you joined us, your new life to us, and we're just overjoyed this night because of you. Thank you very much for saying yes to the Lord. <laughs> Adoration Exposition of the Blessed Sacrament is this Tuesday following the morning mass until 8 o'clock p.m. Let us stand and pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this special paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. And may the days of the Lord's Passion, now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast, come with Christ's help and exalted in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated with eternal joy. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Join in singing our final hymn, 
Jesus Christ is risen today, number 401, verses 1 and 4. Thank you. 